the current labor sector, why are salaries for jobs not at all competitive with the cost of living or even affording to buy a house? Pretty much, you know, since 2020, you could buy a house or, you know, 2019, you could buy or afford a house even if you're making like 60000 a year. And now, if you actually want to buy or afford a house, it's like completely on a different type of level of financial stability and financial, <laughs> I don't know what you want to call it, you know, financial strength, I guess, if you want to call it, or dexterity. Because even if some people have like more than, make more than 200000 or 150000 it's still extremely difficult to be able to buy uh, to buy a house and, you know, to afford, obviously, basic living necessities on top of that. So I really think that it goes to show and draws our attention as to what are all these companies really offering in terms of a competitive salary that's, you know, able that someone can leverage for actually being able just to either, you know, maybe make some bigger investment towards buying a house or buying a car or, you know, affording basic living necessities in comparison to what's actually the economic data on the ground, so to speak, and what people are actually experiencing in these type of macro and macroeconomic conditions. And I can just say that, you know, I ended up buying, being able to buy a car and buy it in full, you know, from the money from my first job. But that was just because I was living at home the whole time to be, which allowed me to control my finances a lot more tightly in which I wasn't pretty much spending because I'm just, you know, a very family oriented person. You know, I go to church with my parents a lot. We, you know, participate in a lot of community events and things like that. And I just felt that you know, for the time being, it was okay just to still be with them, you know, and I know that, you know, some people don't necessarily, um, you know, uh, maybe exercise the same type of habits. And it's not like I'm saying, I want to be here forever or whatever. But, you know, it's just that um, when you, you know, you can really value your family, and you can still get along with them, and you love your family. I think that it's a great thing to maintain, especially in this day and age, because especially like with divorce and other types of, you know, uh, legal proceedings within society that result in, you know, breaking up so many family ties. It's really a great and I think very extremely valuable thing to be able to maintain family whenever you can. But with that being said, that just has to reflect in my experience of the labor sector, because I'm just providing this detail just to say that, you know, if you want to be able to, you know, maybe make some of that type of bigger investment or bigger purchase or for something that can always last for you, it's extremely hard to do it if you have to pay rent and, you know, afford all these other types of basic living necessities on top of that. And I really do think that it goes to show that the term competitive wages and all these other types of terms which companies try to use to make their recruiting process and working for them and the compensation actually very attractive it's completely farther from the case, you know, of reality, because even if you do have a semi-decent or a semi-competitive wage, even like you need easily more than 80,000 just to be around California and, you know, uh, in certain areas of Southern California, maybe like Orange County or whatever. And, you know, obviously even in LA, it's even a bit higher on top of that. And that's not even to mention, like, if you go to other places like New York City, basically New York City, anything that I got was getting from California when I was just going for a short little trip uh, to New York City, it's like a few dollars more, like a buck fifty, two dollars more. And it's like the food is more expensive. And obviously a lot of people, they probably just don't even have cars there. So, I mean, it really just goes to show that, you know, the fact that there's so much of a difference in life and that people are still relying so much on public transportation there and that they have to pay so much in rent and probably very few people who are, you know, I, I would bet and I would think that there's pretty much a very strong probability that anybody who's like buying, you know, uh, some type of property in New York City or they've had it, they probably bought it way before, you know, maybe this time period of this unprecedented inflation and that the vast majority and the, you know, the large proportion of people in New York City, they're basically like, um, they're basically like, you know, renting out thing. And, you know, it just really goes to show about how, you know, either way you put it, wherever you live, you know, due to the fact that there's so much inflation, it just cuts into your paycheck easily, no matter where you're at. And I think that, you know, this is what I really like doing about talk, like about talking about the labor sector and bringing the viewer's attention and everybody's attention to, um, you know, the inflation in the economy is because when you have all these ideas in mind and you realize how all these things are pretty much affecting everybody, it kind of puts whatever effort someone puts in or work someone puts in, in some way, it neutralizes it because it's like, a it's like, it's a difficulty for everybody. So 
it's just really interesting to see whether inflation, as maybe the Federal Reserve um, and Jerome Powell uh, are, you know, are forecasting, is actually able to tame itself by the middle you know, or by next year, which could hopefully uh, result in more rate cuts, which could help the United States economy and hopefully maybe even have a very positive benefit or impact on the global economy as well.